What's up everyone, Art at Patience Metal Fed, and I'm coming out to the parking lot to do a build breakdown on a car that's been here longer than I've worked at PMF. That's the Porsche 964 that you guys have probably seen on our social media. There's been a ton done to this car, and tomorrow it's leaving our shop, so that means that we're all finished up with it. I know Gary is excited to put the wraps on this one, and I'm excited for you guys to hear the air-cooled flat six in this thing. So Gary, why don't you rip it down the street? Joke's on you guys. Well, Gary, obviously I know what's going on with this car, but a lot of our audience uh, might not. Why was it so whisper quiet? Well, this is another way to make 466 horsepower is do it electrically. Oh. <laughs> it's so weirdly fast because there's no noise at all and the torque is instant. If you guys haven't guessed by now, this is a full EV swap. What do we have underneath this Tesla basically? Yeah, so this is a Tesla uh, LDU, 16 batteries, ox drives. We got about 75% battery load on this thing right now and we're actually detorqued right now at about 350 Newton meters as they measure it in those goofy uh, electric numbers. Um, versus about 450 that it would normally be good for. So definitely still some dialing and tweaking to do on this thing, but uh, you know, we'll get there with it. And it's the strangest feeling in here because you're sitting in a, I guess this is a 90s Porsche, but yep. these body styles go back to what, the 80s, even earlier Early than that? Early 70s, the 930 generations are pretty similar to this. So you've got that interior, this custom leather, which is really nice, but then the dashboard is all EV related stuff. You have a battery gauge, you have amps, uh, really goofy to see, but they all fit in the stock location. So you kind of have to take a, a double glance yeah, to figure it, it out. It takes a little bit to get used to, you know, it's... Uh... <laughs> it was a big challenge for us, obviously a big learning lesson. If we were to do it again, I'm sure there's a number of things we would do similar, but really, really different also. Oh yeah. Yeah, battery technology is probably one of the big things that's changed a lot. Um, the control module that we used in this vehicle uh, has already been discontinued um, by AEM actually and superseded to a new module just due to some of the the options and tunability of them. So what I wanna do is get this car back to the shop and dissect it a little bit, pop the hood in the trunk, show you guys exactly what it looks like underneath. Uh, because from the exterior and interior, it mostly looks like a stock 964. Really all the goodies are underneath. For something that should be out of place in a car like this, this entire setup looks really snug in here. It's super cool seeing the Tesla logos as well. Yeah, this is kind of the heart of the beast right here, right? So you got a Tesla LDU, which is a motor, inverter, and a gearbox. Um, basic, pulls it right out. Uh, this would have come out of like a Model 3 or an S. Then you got, as we talked about, the batteries. Housing the full uh, nine ox drive batteries back here. And really, the challenge was packaging, right? So you've got the factory mounting points from the transmission cross member, and then you got the two motor mounts up in the back here. And the goal with all of this was really to make it so that it was fully bolted in, no modifications to the chassis whatsoever, and uh, we accomplished it. So, working with the next rev, the design of the cradle. This cradle kind of serves as a backbone up over the top. There's two big members that go over the top, as you'll see in the pictures that Art adds to the video. And then a couple reinforcements running along the sides. And it's really impressive to see this thing get unbolted and drop out as one big unit. So if you have it up on a lift like this, slide a table underneath, and then you can service it if you needed to or replace anything. Now these are hard line um, stainless cooling pipes that are run down the rocker panel where the original oil cooler lines were. <clears throat> it allows us to um, keep the cooling system kind of routed the way they did with the oil systems before. And in this case, obviously coolant in it, which this car never had before. And then we've got the iBooster. This comes out of a Honda CRV. And what it does is it allows us to not have to run a vacuum pump to still have power brakes in this car. It can be run as a standalone unit. And, uh, you know, it was kind of a shot in the dark to see if this master cylinder would displace enough fluid to match the brake system on this car. 
and I can say with 100% certainty that this thing is stops every bit as good as it did with the original setup in it, if not better. It's really cool to see what makes this thing tick underneath, but the really exciting stuff, especially for the camera, is up top. So we're going to get it down, get it back outside, and pop the hood and trunk. Some time later. Like I mentioned before, this car looks really inconspicuous, especially for being at a fabrication shop for three years. You got a stock body, the interior is obviously redone, uh, but in kind of a stock form, I suppose. There's nothing stripped out, there's no roll cage, there's nothing in there. So let's start there and then kind of move our way out to what makes this car really special from the top. So if you've ever seen the inside of one of these things, they're as 80s as they get. Some white carpet, some white interior. Uh, you know, not something you're gonna keep clean. So Ted went with a really nice kind of high class, uh, a little more modern look to it with that nice leather. Um, the door panels and the dash are actually from a company over in Poland called Carbone that uh, you could send your stuff over to for these cars. They'll do the whole interiors, but it didn't make sense to ship the seats or the center console. So Sean over at Top Stitch took on the challenge of making sure that these seats looked exactly like the door panels and the rears to really make a match. You can't even tell if they came from a different place. The two biggest things to focus on that you guys saw from underneath are gonna be the motor and the batteries. So let's pop the back and kind of give us a little overview of what we got. So it's a lot flashier from the top. We really aim to kind of display the electric GT, the high voltage junction box. You can see there's still a little bit left to do with some wire looming and some cleanup and stuff. I'd say the car all in all is about 90% done. Um, in this case, customer's gonna take it, he's gonna play with some tuning stuff, and then it's gonna come back to us to really finish it off. So what we got back here is power steering pump out of an Opel or an Audi, Volkswagen used them too. Um, so it's an electronic 12 volt uh, power steering pump so we can utilize the rack that you saw up front, factory rack. We got the high voltage junction box from Electric GT, which houses your main contactors and a handful of other stuff that you don't want to stick your fingers into. AEM is the central brain for this thing. It's their VCU, that's the 200. Behind that, we got an onboard charger and a DC-DC converter, and then we got a 400 volt uh, AC compressor in there. It's all kind of nicely packaged. This whole thing actually drops out. That is the coolest part about this build is the fact that you could drop all of this stuff and put that air cooled back in if you wanted to. And we didn't chop this chassis apart and Frankenstein it together. Now, Porsche guys are kind of odd like that. You know, they want to conserve the body if it ever, for some reason, needed to go back to stock. There's nine of those Hox drive batteries in the back. Like I mentioned before, there's actually seven in the front. And one of the cool things about this build is we only wound up about 220 pounds over the weight of the factory Triptronic car. Um, and all the additional weight wound up in the nose of this thing, which actually moved us closer to a desirable 50-50 versus the 60-40 that Porsche had before. So what you see housed in there, like I said, there's seven ox drive batteries in here. Um, you can see the high voltage connector in the back of it. Again, harnesses aren't completely finished yet, but uh, you can see where the big null spec connectors go in. And then on this side, we've got more AEM goodies. So there's three BMS satellites right here. There's three in the back as well. And what these do is they actually monitor the condition of the batteries. That is similar between Tesla or any others. This is really the heart of the system. The way it charges, the way it discharges when you get on it, how much amperage it allows to go to that motor, which results in how fast the car actually goes all controlled by information those BMS satellites are, are, uh, are collecting. The other two items down there are the AEM PDUs. So those are just standard power distribution units. The VCU uses to power a lot of the accessories, the contactors. We've got the cooling fan running through it. Speaking of cooling, I know that Andrew was working really hard on the swirl pot, which is a really cool system. Maybe you could break that down and then even give us the reason of why we would put one of those in. Cause I know a lot of the race cars that come out of our shop have something similar. Yeah, we kind of utilize the same stuff that we've used and works on the ICE cars. Um, and that is just when you're running a cooling system, especially one like this, this system runs a single radiator, a single pump. It splits through a manifold that then directs coolant to battery boxes, to the motor as needed. 
and then it all runs back and comes through this. You got a lot of legs of that cooling system working together, and what that results in is something that's hard to bleed. So swirl pots, that's why you see them on all of our, uh, our ICE cars, especially like if you have a rear engine front radiator or a rear radiator front engine car, long stretches of cooling systems, it makes it so much nicer to bleed it. It's obviously a really cool and compact setup in here. The fact that all of this stuff fits under the hood is pretty impressive um, and something that you wouldn't be expecting when you popped this. Is there any other little unexpected things that I should know about? You know, they always say it's all in the details. I gotta hand Electric GT some credit on this one. That's a nice little touch on the uh, on the charger right there. It's really difficult to summarize a three-year build into a 10, 15-minute breakdown like this, but I know this has been really a testbed car for EV swaps. Uh, it's been the main one in our shop. Otherwise, you guys know the type of content we usually serve up. It's a lot of race cars, combustion cars. So what is the future for us and EVs? Are we going to take on another one of these projects, or is it a one-off? I think in general, uh, you know, it's coming down the pipeline. You look at like the scaler car in motorsports, uh, you know, it's coming along. For us, building race cars, we gotta be able to deal with all of it. We already mount engines and fuel cells. In this case, it's just an electric motor and batteries. So things like Hypercraft, some of the new car companies, some of the new battery companies coming out, um, you're definitely gonna see this more in motorsports and it's just necessary for us to understand it. For this package in specific, uh, as we said, you know, the engineering is done on this. It's a bolt-in application. If another person with a 964, or even a 930, or probably a 993 for the most part, um, you know, was interested in doing something like this, reach out. It's definitely something we'd entertain doing again. I think we pretty much said everything we can about this one. Uh, all it's left to do is load it up and get on the transport. Time to see it gone. All right, well, take off and uh, we'll see it back in maybe a couple months. Here it comes, Ted. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed the breakdown on that Porsche. It is a little sad to see it leave after it's been in the shop for so long, but the awesome part is that it's freeing up space for new projects to come in. There is a backlog of work, so we're gonna be bringing in some new stuff that I'm really excited about. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but there's gonna be some new series coming up. So make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our page, stay tuned for a lot of fun stuff to come.